Good afternoon, guys. Welcome back to the channel. David here with another cryptocurrency update. First of all, thank you guys all for joining the channel, liking, subscribing, and sharing these videos with your friends and family and with people who you believe are the biggest skeptics in this space. You have to start to get this message out. Now, whether or not you're a subscriber to Digital Asset Investor or Alex Cobb or a new subscriber here, it is definitely really important that we share the message with others, especially when it comes to speaking about people like Bearable Guy or people like the Ripple Riddler. There's so much instantaneous triggers to people that see a video that's titled Bearable Guy or something that's discussing about the Ripple Riddler. But why is this? And I think this comes down largely to do with what we've discussed in our videos in the past about the difference between speculation and calculation. In most of the instances with the Ripple Riddler or Bearable Guy, speculation is at hand. And there's not clear-cut paths or avenues to figuring out why or how exactly they come up with these calculations. Because that's not what they are. They're just numbers. So, that's what today's video is going to be about. We're going to get into some number crunching about Tron, XRP, Stellar Lumens, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic. We're going to go through what it takes to actually get to some of these numbers that Bearable Guy is talking about, $589. What kind of, what kind of uh, hocus pocus is a Bearable Guy trying to pull on us by making us think that $589 is even possible without giving us a means of how to get there? I'm going to go ahead and start by reading a little bit before we get into the numbers. If you guys want to hang with me, I do appreciate it. I definitely appreciate all the shares, the likes, and the comments on this video and all of the past videos. Here we go. The derivatives market is often estimated at more than $1.2 quadrillion. Here's a side point. Before I go any farther, if you don't know what a quadrillion dollars is, it took me a little bit of time to figure out the exact definition. It is quite a substantial number. So 1.2 quadrillion on the high end, largely because there are numerous derivatives in existence available on virtual every possible type of investment, including equities, commodities, bonds, foreign currency exchanges as well. Some market analysts even place the size of the market at more than 10 times that of the world gross domestic product, the GDP. I was looking at numbers of the GDP around 70 trillion today. So if they're talking 10 times 70 trillion, now you're able to get closer to where some of these crazy numbers will come from. But we'll touch on that a little bit later on in this video. We're going to get more into something having to pertain to the stock market directly at this point. We're going to take a jump back into 1999. New York Stock Exchange, as of October 1999, there were 3,066 companies listed. As of October 1999, 3,066 companies. One of those companies, and this is why we're going to talk about them, one of those companies was IBM. And a site resource said that IBM had 1,809,090,000 outstanding shares. 1.8 billion shares on October 21st. This resource will also tell you that the stock for IBM closed at $91, which means that IBM's total market capitalization, 1991, October 21st, was $164 billion. In other words, if all the shares of IBM were bought by one person for $91, the person would have to pay $164 billion to buy IBM. If you perform that calculation across the entire spectrum of the New York Stock Exchange during that time, you will get a number of $15 trillion. I need you guys to try and stay focused here with these numbers, okay? IBM total market cap, $164 billion. Total capitalization of the New York Stock Exchange, $15 trillion. Now, why is this an important number for us to try and focus on? That's because $15 trillion is 10 times larger than the total 
currency supply of the United States dollar, which if you ask the Federal Reserve would be around $1.5 trillion in fiat paper dollars printed. Ah, but the interesting thing is, as we say, there's only $1.5 trillion of fiat printed money in U.S. dollars. First of all, most of those dollars are held outside of the United States, okay? But a comparable tally of currency in circulation from all over the world tracked by the Bank for International Settlements totals around $5 trillion, which makes the total currency supply of the physical fiat dollar through the entire world three times smaller than the total market capitalization of the New York Stock Exchange in 1999. Interesting. But using a more inclusive right? M using a more inclusive de definition of money where we start to actually source out where the money comes from, where it's housed, that number <laughs> is much higher. <laughs> Add in checking accounts, savings account, money markets, not quite physical money, but you can make a bank transaction digitally and use that as money. Total amount of money easily accessible in the world economy grows by several multiples. This is called broad money. We've spoken about this in a couple of our other videos. Broad money. And according to the CIA World Factbook and... No, sorry. Yeah, according to the Factbook, the total is in excess of $80 trillion. This is all money that is easily accessible with a bank transfer or a debit card purchase. Money that is in the digital ledgers of fiat dollars. Interesting. 80 trillion. All right. Like we said, most of that, most of the broad money in the world economy isn't actual cash held in bank vaults. It's bank balances on digital ledgers, money that people deposited into banks and banks then lent out again. So if everybody lined up, and we've said this before, if everybody lined up at their bank and said, you know what, give me my money today. No, wouldn't happen you would have what would they call a classic banking run or a, you know something that would induce a bank holiday where all the banks had to close, the dollar values all got readjusted, everything changed. Hmm, interesting. This is where we're going to get into the calculations, guys. I want you to try and stay focused. Don't let the numbers taint you, okay? Don't let how low or how high you think these, these calculations are scare you. All right, here we go. 60 major stock exchanges around the globe valued at around $69 trillion. Worldwide real estate value valued at around $217 trillion. Above ground gold total in dollar figures with 2.5 billion ounces of gold at 1300 ounce, 1300 an ounce estimate is around $3.25 trillion in gold value alone. Silver value above ground, 4 billion ounces at around $15.50 is 620, no, sorry, $62 billion. That is, uh, that's pretty crazy. A lot of money. Total currency supply includes money markets, digital money easily accessible in Checkings accounts and savings accounts is estimated at 80 trillion, like we said. If you were to, if you were to like, 1% is the numbers that I normally like to calculate. It's like if you were going to have a, a sale, if you were going to put out a flyer for your business and you were expecting anything more than a 1% response rate or a 1% flow through of your clients or click through rate, uh, don't expect more than that. So we're going to use 1% as our launching point, okay? This is where we're going to get our numbers from is all of those numbers that we just read, you know, 69 trillion, 217 trillion, uh, 32, no, 3.25 trillion. Okay, all those numbers added up equal, no, all those 1% of those numbers added up is three trillion six hundred ninety three billion one hundred and twenty million dollars. Everything that's gold, silver, real estate, bank accounts, stocks, and currency. Three trillion 
693,120,000,000. This is where the calculations come in because now we have a number to focus on. Now we could focus on that almost almost 3.3 trillion dollars. Okay? No, almost 3.7 trillion. Here we go. That if you divided that by the 138 billion dollars that exists in the market cap currently of cryptocurrency, that would be a 29, sorry, 26 times return, okay? Which means if 1% of all of the gold, silver, real estate, bank accounts, and stocks and currency, 1% flowed into cryptocurrency, that's where we're going to get these numbers, 1%. XRP, 1% of everything we just named takes XRP to $9.90 same with Bitcoin. It takes Bitcoin to $108,619. 108619 Ethereum goes to $4,197. Litecoin goes to $1,049. Ethereum Classic goes to $145. Stellar Lumens goes to $3.29. And Tron would make an astounding run to $0.61. Cents. That's for 1%. We can quantify that. We can multiply that. It's easy. If you were to get 5% of mass adoption, and that is what we're going to call it. If you were to attain 5%, these numbers are very, very exciting. 5% of the entire gold, silver, real estate market, bank accounts, stocks, and currency that would be crazy. $49.50 per XRP. For Bitcoin, $543,094. For Ethereum, $20,985. For Litecoin, that would take you up to $5,347. For Ethereum Classic, that would take you to $727.87. For Stellar Lumens, XLM, that would take you to $16.05. For Tron, that would take you to $3.07. I don't know if you guys are sticking with me here. These are calculations. And I'm not using everything. And I'm not using the derivatives markets, which we discussed earlier. Okay? Understand, this is nothing but a start. If you don't believe that cryptocurrency is going to shut itself off and you think there's validity to this market and you believe there's going to be use case and adoption and indoctrination coming forward with people learning about this and using it and transacting on it, traveling with it and living on it and for it and, and working with it to build it. If you think that's possible and you can't estimate that 1% of all of these asset classes that are basically... If you have money in the bank account, that means you're working. If you have investments, that means you're uh, able to reach out and, and think just outside of spending money on a day-to-day -day for food and for clothes. That's money that could all possibly be right there at the fingertips of cryptocurrency. That's if every coin stayed where it is, if nothing vanished, if we didn't have coin apocalypse, if it didn't die, that is the numbers. And like I said, that's not calculating in the derivatives markets. If we were to calculate in the derivatives markets as well, that would drastically change these numbers. We would go for another every 1% adoption, including in the derivatives markets, we'd be including in another $1.2 trillion for every 1% of the derivatives markets that found a way to get out of the derivatives markets and tokenize a little bit of their asset there and cryptoize it for point eight nine three trillion dollars market cap total market cap for crypto for every one percent of derivative markets gold silver real estate bank accounts stocks and currency that transfers on to the blockchain that's huge <laughs> i'm not going to do the calculations on that um because it's it's massive and it's about a 35x uh on one percent so um I'll let you guys have fun with that. In regards to yesterday's um, Twitter challenge that we had, we had a few people uh, join in to do it. You guys 
I think we had four guys share it. Rick Santos was the first one. Uh, a couple other guys joined in after that. We had two guys that actually tied. So uh, as the leader of this channel and the one who's going to be making these challenges, Ty does not go to, to both people. 50 XRP is a pretty small amount, so we're going to redo another challenge. So today's challenge is going to be to calculate the, the highest end of this market and leave that comment down below. Leave an interesting comment, leave a funny comment, whatever you think the highest number, and I'm not looking for an actual number because you're not going to come up with the exact number that I did. So give me your most creative number, how you came up with it, and what your reasonings are for that being a valid calculation not speculation. Thank you guys all for joining the video. And yeah, that's going to be for 75 XRP and I will choose the winner. 75 XRP goes to the person with the most creative response to how big cryptocurrency as a whole can get. Now, whether or not you want to break that down into individual price points or however you want to do it, have some fun with it. That's going to be the point of this channel and this entire space at this point is to just have fun. Thank you guys very much. XRP to the moon, Bitcoin to the moon. Everybody is going to the moon. I'll see you guys in the next episode.